Hello folks, today we are going to talk about an interesting topic of securing your RDS instances. Think of a front end or a multiple application servers that you are talking to your database instance and you want to make sure all the data traffic between your application instance and your RDS happens through an SSL connection. Then how to do that? So that is what we are going to see. As usual, I have written a GitHub article. In this article, you will be able to see that there are a couple of prerequisites. One is having an RDS instance with MySQL engine and another one is a client which will interact with this RDS instance. I have gone ahead and set up an um, RDS instance already. So here I am calling my RDS instance as only SSLTB. If you don't know how to set up an RDS instance, go ahead and watch my video. I put in the link there in the GitHub article. And this is my RDS instance endpoint. So I'm going to connect to it from my client using the root credentials or the user credentials that I provided when I created this one. So this is my DB username. So I'm going to connect to it now. So if you are not known that this is a syntax MySQL followed by the host name and followed by I'm if you notice that for my root I have already enabled SSL certificate. So I'm just going to go ahead and connect to my database now. So it's giving me a password prompt. I have put in the password. I'm going to connect. Now I get the prompt here. So if I want to know what are all the users are there, what are all the connections that has been already made. So let us go ahead and see whether my connection is secure or not. The easiest way to do is backslash s and you will see something like this SSL ciphertext which is meaning that my connection is secure. That's another way to check that. Let us do that as well. So let us paste the command that it says show session status and you can see once again my SSL cipher is this and I can also go ahead and list the users. Say for example I'm going to create a new user called as encrypted user and every connection made from this user should be encrypted for me. So let us go ahead and create a user first. Yeah, for people who might not be familiar with how to create users, I have written those steps also. This is a command to create an user and giving them privileges and also setting up the SSL for them. So let us go ahead and of course you need to modify this username and password for the values that you would be interested in. So since this is a demonstration, I'm just going to choose an easy one to type it out here. Before we go ahead and uh, create our users, I'm going to see what are all the users that are already there. So you can see here there are only uh, four users. That is the only SSL uh, TB user and then the other is system users. Let us go ahead and create our encrypted user now. So the first command create user to this one, it's created the user, set is the password as a simple user. And then I'm just going to grant the privileges for this database. And then I'm saying uh, for this user, and I'm going to flush the privileges. In other words, all these actions that we have taken has gone live now. So I have created another session with the same uh, client and I'm going to connect to my database with uh, encrypted user ID now. Let us do that. Now still remember we have not enabled SSL for this user. So we should be able to connect without providing the user uh, without providing the certificate for this user. So I'm just going to say encrypted encrypted underscore user and hyphen P password and it gives me a prompt. I'm just going to put in the password and it gets connected if I do a backslash S and we, I will see that my SSL is not in use. If we go ahead and try the other command also, it will say the same thing. So this is what we wanted to avoid. So how do I enforce that my encrypted user is always using a secure connection? So let us go back to our root user login and the command to execute or enforce secure login is this is the main command. So we are going to say, alter user and this is my user id and logging in from any place require ssl and once i set this one and then once i flush the privileges once again that is in other words making the settings active any new connection made with this user id will always be enforced for ssl so let us go ahead and simulate that i'm just going to exit out of this terminal now and i'm just going to try and connect again even if i put in the password it will give me an error now says saying that it is not allowed. Whereas if I have to download the certificate and add the certificate value here, I will be able to connect. So let us see how to do that now. Here you can see that I have created the steps for downloading the certificate. I'm just creating a directory and uh, going to the directory and copying the 
or downloading the certificate if you don't have curl if you have wget or something similar you can download the bundle from there and then you can use it command as shown here so let's go ahead and do this step first so I'm just going to go ahead and download it and if I do an ls l I should be able to see the certificate here so we should be using the certificate and connect to our RDS database instance once again the command is simple mysql followed by my host name and then the important pieces are adding the certificate this is what the uh, command options are hyphen ssl hyphen ca equal to my certificate location that is slash where mysql certifications and then i'm going to say i need an ssl mode certificate enabled so i'm just going to put in my encrypted user as my user id and i'm going to say port number 3306 and i would like to put in my password as well so i put in my password you see here i get connected and if i go ahead and say slash s and i will see that under ssl section i have my encrypted ciphers are also there so that is how you make sure the connections from your database uh, to your front-end applications or uh, other services are encrypted through ssl certificates if you can do this for Microsoft or database engines, Oracle engines, or, or, or any of the other engines supported by RDS. If you have any difficulty or if you have further queries on how, why we need to do this, how to do this, go ahead and put them in the comment section below and I will be helping you with those questions. Thanks for watching. Happy learning.